You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, God damn it! Get the point good. And now... Bend over. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Hey there, hi there, ho there, everybody. And guess what? It is a Freaker Friday, and it is a beautiful Freaker Friday. I have been out playing in the yard most of the day, trying to get some stuff caught up before the moisture moves in, because it looks like, according to Barman, or Weather Dork, or... Who is it? Weather Dork? Yeah, Weather Dork told me that I got rain coming in, which, yeah, I already knew that, which is why I've been out in the yard. So, um, and yeah, Grimmy, I always sing that song that there's going to be more than one child born to carry on for me, because seriously, do you think just one person can handle all the stuff that I do? (laughs) Wait a minute, I do. (laughs) Okay, I think if there was one other person like me, the world would probably implode. Just putting that out there. But y'all are listening to, did I say that already? That you're listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair? (laughs) Here on RealLibertyMedia.com, Channel 10. Also on the RLM, um, let's see, RLM Spreaker Channel, RLM TuneIn Radio Station, RLM Internet Radio Station, and lots of other RLM and numb places later. So, um, yeah, it is a Freaker Friday. Wee-ha! And it's, yeah, there's no rest for the weary or the wicked, and that fits me in both cases. So, I'm a WW. Oy, 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 oy. In any case, let's get to saying some hey there, hi there, ho there, and let you know that there's a few things that, that yeah... I saw on Twitter, which just lets just reaffirms for me that yeah, the universe pays attention to what I'm paying attention to and sends me more of it. Most people would call it quinky dink. I don't believe in quinky dinks, but that's just me. So um, I'm gonna go over because I know I shared these things on Twitter, but they just as I was getting ready to um, you know do. The Redidio, I was scrolling on Twitter. I was checking a few sites out. And uh, here we go from Debt Slave. Um, measles is a deadly disease? Well, people say measles is a deadly disease, but it's not. We create fear because we use that fear to get people vaccinated. That's from Dr. Larry Palevsky, MD. Yeah. And according to him, they don't cause autism. Yeah. But when I shared it, it was fear porn. Because seriously, if measles were a deadly dis-ease, most everybody that's alive right now would not be here. Because either your parents or your grandparents or both got that disease. But wait. They survived and went on to procreate. Hence, you being here. So you are proof that that's bullshit. That's number one that I saw, and I'm just telling you this because this is where I'm going tonight. The other one from Debt Slave is, uh, Modern medicine is a negation of health. It isn't organized to serve human health, but only itself as an institution. The meme says, anything that is produced by the earth cannot be patented. Which is why pharmaceutical companies made a law that only a drug can cure or prevent dis dis eases. Now, the pharmaceutical companies, in a roundabout way, made that law because, well, you know, that under-the-table dealing shit that goes on with the FDA, the Fraud and Death Administration, and Congress, you know, that bunch of baboons. So, um, they falsified the success of natural cures so that they can make billions of dollars from patented chemical drugs and see if you stop and think and I don't know how many of you ever saw these commercials I remember them when I was teens 
early 20s where you know you would have these people trekking through the Amazon and it was commercials from pharmaceutical companies that were saying we send our best scientists to the Amazon jungle and other exotic places to find the plants that will help us create medicines to cure you. Yeah, that's Big Pharma got most of their ideas for medications from nature itself. Do the research, peeps, instead of blindly swallowing what some person in a white coat is giving you. Now, I happen to be wearing today a very flowy, very lightweight white shirt with green and red stripies on it. So it's not technically a white coat, but I'm going to tell you, you want to swallow a pill, swallow a red pill and call me in the morning. Okay? Okay. So getting that out there, because I'm, yeah, I'm calling out some BS. And this is a, a kind of a personal BS for me because, yeah, I had to deal with this stuff. Okay, so where is that at? There we go. Um, so over here on Twitter, hi everybody. Thank you, Barman, for tweeting me out, letting everybody know that I am live and in poison. Also over here in, in the Matrix, hello anybody that's over there. I shared Barman's tweet and apparently it just shows a little tweet. And so I just put kicking off Freaker Friday. So mm, if somebody sees it, they see it. If they don't, they don't. It's not like I'm going to cry in some spilled milk over it. Wait, I don't have any spilled milk. Booyah! Don't have to cry. Now, over here on this wonderful Freedoms Network, if it will pull up. Come on, FM. There you are. There you are. Uh, let me see who is over here on this FM site. It's, it's refreshing. It's refreshing. While it's refreshing, I'll go check out mine. How's that sound? Oh, wait. Whoa. Whoop. It just did it. There we go. Thank you, Grim, for letting everybody over here know that I am live and in poison. And uh, it looks like Estrella was here for a while, as well as Grim and Loki Luck 3 and Chris of the Family Masters. So, that Estrella, she just posts like a wild woman, and so does Loki Luck 3. Over here on Minds, thank you once again, RLM Channel, for letting everybody over here know that I am live, or that I'm coming up, at least. Um, okay, hi Dustin, hi Dominic, hi Scarecrow23, cool, and Sovereign, Sovereign Worldwide, yeah, cool, okay, on Fakey Book, okay, this is my brother-in-law, bless his heart, he just became grandpa, <laughs> in any case, first thing when I opened up Facebook, there he is, that wild man. When things seem especially rough, just ask yourself, did you shit your pants today? If the answer is no, you're doing all right. Thank you, brother Al. <laughs> I love that. That's so you. <laughs> oh, you know, never trust a shark, or I mean a fart, because it could be a shark. Just putting that out there as well. Over here in this realliberty.org, where Bob Renner and Grimner are hanging out. Thank you, Grim, for letting everybody over here know that I am coming up. I am live. I am in poison. And let's see, that's... Do, 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 do. I think I made it to all of those. So it's time to go to the one place where you need to be if you want to give me static. If you're listening in on Spreaker and you want to talk to me, or chat with me, or just send me some kind of coded message that I will probably totally fee Come on over to reallibertymedia.com. Think of a nickname. Join the chat. Give me some static. I'll give it back. And, yeah, I'm pretty good at that. In any case, Dr. Grammy. Um, yeah, I know. Isn't that just crazy, Rob Works? In any case, over here, <laughs> white code equals quack. Yeah. They're coming to take me away, ha ha. They're coming to take me away, ho ho, hee hee, ha ha, to the funny farm. <sighs> Hi, Barman. Barman's right up top. He's the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world. Closely followed by Beetle. Hi, Beetle. Where's Pippi? You got Pippi in your lap? Just checking. 
I also see Cowboy Tech, long time no see, hon. I hope you're hearing pleasant voices. And looky there, Grimner, the RLM god, closely followed by the lovely Moose Goyle. Hey, Moosey. Oh, Dan Tenney's seed fell out. Darn it, Dan. Darn it, darn it, darn it. Um... Oh, you actually saw them live? Cool beans. He actually saw my intro song, that group, live. That would be freaking awesome. Um, let's see, where was I at? Yeah, Moose Goyal. Moose Girl, who's a hot mama. Because her boys are complaining because it's warm out there. I have yet to uncover my air conditioner. Ceiling fans are doing it for me. So, but I'm not as hot as Moosey, so, you know, got to put that out there as well. Grimmy and Moose will be on later on this evening for the Freakers Ball, so, yeah, be ready, be ready. I also see Backward Bracket DC is here as well as Anti, Asmodeus Asmo is also here as well as Chalsa Denis. Yours truly is here, and looky there, Java, 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 Java Doctor 2. How's that knee doing, hon? I hope it's doing absolutely amazing. God made pot, man made beer. Who do you trust? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> well, <laughs> when you put it like that, <laughs> and I said that and it just popped up in the chat that that's what Rob Works said. <laughs> Oh, see, I tell you, the universe, it's connecting, let me tell you. any case, where am I at? Meister Brower. Hey, Meister Brower, how you doing, hon? As well as Ponder Gander. That's the Vinny Alter Ego. He was on earlier today. I was out in the uh, yard. Sorry, Vin. Missed it. I'll catch it later. Um, the lovely Miss Kate is also here, as well as Rob Woix, who fired up that bubbler. Yeah, buddy. Bubblers, tiny bubbles. In the bath. Don't trust a shark. <laughs> it's a Freaker Friday. What the hell? I can be a little bubbly, can't I? Sure I can. Trust No One is also here as well as the lovely Miss Vanna White. And looky there, Weather Dork letting us know just how hot we really are. <laughs> The lovely Z, Beth Z, is also in the chat, as well as Phantom. And we got a cyborg noodle, and since today is Friday, it is National Pastafarian Day. Well, every day, every Friday is Pastafarian Day, because it's a Pastafarian holy day, so may you be touched by his cyborg cyborgian noodliness. I also see Dakota is in the chat, as well as JJ's 99. Yay, JJ's! How you doing? Did you, did you have lots of people listening in? I hope you did, hon. Kiss is also in the chit chat, as well as moi, 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 moi. We got some rituals going on. Cool. Are they way cool rituals? Rituals just tried to shoot a duck and it was already gone. Sorry. Done dud the duck. I don't like AC either, Moosey. I really don't. It's just, whew. I would much rather just have air movement. But, and there really wasn't a whole lot outside while I was mowing, so I was getting a little bit on the warmish side. And I have some pink showing on the skin. Oops. Guess I need to get my coconut oil out. In any case, back to saying sock puppet. Hey, sock. Sock, did you get socked the other day? Sock it to me, sock it to me, sock it to me, sock it to me. <laughs> yeah, I've been watching laughing reruns too. What the hey? Sometimes you just plain need that little dose of, it's not really reality, but damn, it's a lot more fun than reality. I also see Vinny Tuwaris. That's one of them there kind of dinosaurs that sci that I think those scientists made that crap up because there really ain't no such critter as a Vinny Tawaris. Is there? I hope. To. Oh, my God. Oh, whoa. Gold closed the week over $1,300. Bam! Only gold I have is in my teeth. <laughs> oh, no, wait. I have my mom's gold wedding band. I guess that counts. Not a lot, but yeah, what the hey? She didn't need any more. Um, let's see, where am I at? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Let me go look. Wait a minute, I need to look in the red pill as well. I haven't been to the red pill. Ventures, hi Ventures, how you doing, sweetie? Um, Ventures is over here in the red pill as well as Apostle and F Canella and Juana Taco and Q Cupcake. 
are also over here. So hey there, hi there, ho there, all of you guys. How you doing? Now it's time to get to um, something that I saw earlier today. And it just kind of tweaked, chapped my hide. Let's put it that way. It just chapped my hide. This is from realpharmacy.com. How statins cause heart problems and use these natural solutions instead. So it's not just pointing out the bad juju and then saying, fear porn, fear porn, there's nothing you can do about it. There are, oh, wait a minute, natural things don't, but according to Big Pharma and statins, yeah. I had several doctors try and push that shit off on me and it's like, uh, no, you take it. Thank you very little. So, in the past, some MDs have proposed that statin drugs should be put into our water supplies and handed out to fast food customers, as if fluoridated water posing a necessary mass medicine that turns out to be toxic isn't enough. Which, by the way, I did read something the other day, and then I lost it because, well, you know, I pushed a button. Something about there is a class action lawsuit about the fluoridated water and I think I need I need to research that because I think that would just be freaking awesome to make them stop doing that. Because yeah, apparently there, although there are lots of companies now that have filtration systems that they will sell you. Follow the money. I wonder who they're connected with. Sell you filtration systems that will filter that nasty fluoride out of your water. Yeah, there are some that do that. There's even some that filter glyphosate out of the water. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I may need to get one of those living out here in farm country. In any case, back to this article. So, one out of four Americans age 55 or over are on statin drugs. Not moi. They tried, and I told them where they could put it. It's really a suppository for you, honest and for true. In any case, most of whom are without cardiovascular or heart problems, and yet... Now, many are prescribed statins solely for high cholesterol, which your body needs. Even as the Fraud and Death Administration, the FDA, finally got around to forcing some, but not all, of their side effects on statin labels and ads. Yeah. Now, maybe Pfizer wasn't content with their sales revenue of 140 billion with a B while its patent on Lipitor was in effect. And now other pharmaceutical companies continue to rake in profits with their statin drug versions, while MDs and cardiologists push them on ignorant, middle-aged folks that think their doctors know best. It's the white coat syndrome is what it is. Actually, that white coat syndrome is real. And if your blood pressure is somewhat elevated when you go to the doctor's office, it's because of that frickin' white coat. Now, even many young people are now being scammed into taking a statin prescription due to an outdated attitude towards LDL versus HDL levels. I was told that HDL was happy cholesterol, whereas LDL was not quite so happy. Maybe it was lethargic cholesterol. For, I don't know. Now, Dr. Carolyn Dean, MD, ND, author of Death by Modern Medicine, <laughs> yeah, and passionate promoter of magnesium supplementation, posted an abstract from a Japanese study that scientifically ind ind indicts statin drugs as uh, perpetrators of bad heart health rather than proclaimed solutions of heart health. Now, there was an ad that appeared in a Canadian publication in 2002, and it, it was a solid example of pro-statin propaganda. And this ad, it's just a great big picture there, but it says, which would you rather have, a cholesterol test or a final exam? Well, if that final exam gets me the hell out of this shit, <laughs> I suck at taking tests. Do I have to study? I studied for a pee test once, and then I didn't have any pee when I had to pee because I'd studied so much. In any case, there is a wonderful little ad there for you to peruse when I share. I should just go ahead and put this in the chat. So in case you wish to read along, read along with Grammy and catch all of her verbal faux pas. There you go. What's that? 
Okay, so Pfizer must have spent millions of dollars on just this one ad, and the implication is clear. You will not die as long as your blood cholesterol is low, and you had better take a statin if it isn't that. So, this is, or this was, and is a lie. Really? Lying to make a profit? Say it ain't so. Now, in primary prevention, there is no evidence any life has been prolonged by a statin. The corollary implication is that as long as your cholesterol is low, you can eat anything. No problem with eating those chocolate-coated ice cream bars and weighing 300 pounds. Well, I did once in a while would... I didn't have a hankering for one of those until I read that. Damn it. Now, the studies that really trash statins are overlooked by most doctors and the Fraud and Death Administration. Why? Because they're committing a fraud by taking money from Big Pharma to push poison on you and saying it's for your own good. Now, the Japanese study abstract posted in March of 2015 journal Expert Review of Clinical Pharmacology titled Statins Stimulate Arterial Sclerosis and Heart Failure Pharmacology or Pharmacological Mechanisms woo, that Dr. Dean was excited about concludes with this mildly stated stinger. Thus, the epidemic of heart failure and arterial sclerosis that plaques or that plagues the modern world may paradoxically be aggravated by the pervasive use of statin drugs. We propose that current statin treatment guides be critically reevaluated. Hmm. Now, the abstract mentions how CoQ10 is produced. Um, is Okay, CoQ10 is production and is stymied by statins, and you need CoQ10. Your liver needs it. Now, our online health junkies do know that CoQ10, which is a coenzyme Q10, was discovered and used first in Japan for heart health and spread internationally as a supplement to enhance cellular energy, um, cellular energy production, or ATP. So... This necessary supporting coenzyme for good heart and cardiovascular health is depleted by statin drugs. It's not a good start, huh? And the abstract goes on to mention how vitamin K2 is inhibited. And it's now known that K2 to 7 or MK7 supplements and foods rich in K2 to 7 like... Uh, Natto are needed to ensure calcium doesn't calcify literally in the arteries and within heart chambers. Instead, K2-7 along with magnesium ensures the calcium gets into bones and teeth. Because you can't just take calcium supplements and think that it's going to make your teeth stronger. Taking just one supplement ain't going to do it because your body is the toe bones connected to the foot bone, connected to the ankle bone, connected to the leg bone, connected to the knee bone, connected. Everything's interconnected and it takes other little things to help these do and that's the difference between big pharma and nature because the plant that is naturally good for you is the full package. Whereas, and big pharma can't patent that. But if they take little components out of that complete package and synthesize it, they can patent that. And they can say, we got this from such and such plant. And so here, this must be good for you because this plant is good for you. But what they don't tell you is it doesn't have all of the other wonderful little components that put together make that jigsaw puzzle picture actually amazing and work well in your body. There I go, off on a rant again. Now, <clears throat> back to the article. Um, dun 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 dun. So, the emphasis on beefing up on calcium supplements has led to worsening heart health. Uh -huh. And vitamin K2 helps usher calcium from the blood and into bones where it should be. 
Both magnesium and silica are minerals that assist this process as well. Another reason Dr. Dean promotes magnesium, which magnesium is wonderful for you, but you need to take it with in any case, the Japanese study also isolates how statins impair biosynthesis of selenium pro uh, proteins such as uh, glutathione, which preserves or which serves to prevent lipid um, peroxidation, which is a process that injures membranes of cells made of fat. So, and women need to get selenium in their system. You do not have a diet. Most women these days do not have enough selenium in their diet. So you do need to get some kind of supplement that's got selenium in it. Selenium, selenium, whatever. But it's, it's very good for breast health, ladies. So if you wish to keep the girls healthy, get a multivitamin that's high in selenium, okay? Or get you some selenium supplements. Um, it's a mineral supplement that has plenty of selenium in it. Putting that out there. Now, a 2013 study in Ireland, the ugly side of statins, systemic appraisal of the unknown unknowns. Oh, hey, hey, people in government use that kind of phraseology as well. And it concluded with a fighting Irish blunt hammer blow that these findings on statin major adverse effects had been underreported and the way in which they were withheld from the public and even concealed is a scientific farce. Junk science basically is a lot of the stuff behind a lot of big pharma including vaccines. That's junk science. Now the study was featured in healthimpactnews.com and the completely or the complete open access study of statin horrors is available and there is a link there. The 2013 study was completed before some medical scientists woke up to realize that our Alzheimer's and other neurological disease epidemic is associated to the adverse effects of destroying the process of manufacturing cholesterol, an intended target of statin drugs. Your brain is like 67% cholesterol, peeps. Now, a good bit of cholesterol is necessary for brain cell walls and nervous system um, my myelin sheathing, which both protects the central nervous system to promote good electrical neuron communication. So, some better options for maintaining your heart health? Dr. Dean has some basic suggestions. She recommends loading up on quality magnesium, considered the master mineral as it is involved in over 300 cellular metabolic processes, many of which directly affect the heart. And Dr. Dean offers online um, order of high quality magnesium supplements. There is a link there. And she points out that magnesium also inhibit, inhibits the overproduction of cholesterol instead of destroying that production completely the way statins do. Now, magnesium helps maintain a proper balance of cholesterol production. With too much or too little cholesterol, the initial conversion of sunlight to vitamin um, to vitamin D cannot take place nor can there be enough lipid support cell membranes and brain cell production. Low vitamin D levels are precursors of severe disease states. Now Linus Pauling came up with his own um, vitamin C and L-lysine amino acid combination to remove calcified plaque from arteries and promote arterial elasticity. There is a link for that as well. So, and there's some wonderful links off on the side here as well. So, but I did, and I'm seeing Eat Organic and all this other fun stuff. And yet, um, I saw a meme on Twitter and I forgot to share that one so I could still see it. But um, it's one about how can you really say that you're growing anything organic with all of the nastiness in the sky? all those tic-tac-toe grids. You are not able to grow anything organic these days 
because of the the plethora of roundup and roundup-esque kind of stuff because there is no more roundup per se that is being retired by bear they have another brand and i was going to look that up and i totally spazzed it off until just right now but uh yeah nasty 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 stuff shat and statins there you go eat peanuts oh they do i didn't know they had plenty of coq10 i love peanut butter and they have selenium too sweet and they have magnesium bonus round peanuts for everyone oh but wait how many people are allergic to peanuts i wonder i wonder because you know there's a lot of a lot of the stuff that i've been checking out lately and digging into and researching and stuff it really does show that you you got to go back quite a ways to see even the beginnings of this nastiness that's going on right now this is what we are living in right now is the culmination of what was plotted and schemed centuries ago centuries ago and maybe just maybe all of these nasty vaccines because you know a lot of people a lot of people that i know that are allergic to peanuts you know the, it's in the vaccine era you really didn't hear that much about peanut allergies pre-vaccine era era i wonder i wonder hmm Hmm. And rituals keeps popping in and popping out and popping in and popping out. Rituals? Is that some kind of kinky ritual? <laughs> I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Okay. Oh, there we are. Yeah. It's the Monsanto bear merger is bad news for the planet. Yeah, this is one that um, I think I put that in the RLM chat the other day. And actually, I think I will just go to this real quick because it's from truthdig.com. I mean, seeing as how I started down that lovely little path. It's from April of last year, so it's a little bit over a year old. Mm. I needed to drink. I made myself some key lime infused water today and oh god it's yummy um in any case two new studies from europe show that the number of birds in agricultural areas of france have crashed by a third in just 15 years with some species being almost eradicated and the collapse of the bird population mirrors the discovery last october that more than three quarters of all flying insects in germany have vanished in just three decades Insects are the staple food source of birds, the pollinators of fruit, and aerators of the soil. Now, the chief suspect of the mass extinction is the aggressive use of, uh, okay, pesticides. I'm not going to even try to, because I barely made it through that other one with statins. That's a, that's a dumb hanger of a word there. Um... Let's see, and these are made by a German-based chemical giant, Bayer. Ah, one is that imidacloprid, imidacloprid, and clothianindindindindi. Yeah, see, that's what I mean. <laughs> now, these pesticides, along with the toxic glyphosate herbicides such as Roundup, have delivered a one-two punch to monarch butterflies, honeybees, and birds. But rather than banning these toxic chemicals, on March 21st, the EU approved the $66 billion, with a B dollar merger of Bayer and Monsanto. And the, that's the U.S. agribusiness giant that produces Roundup the, and genetically modified seeds that have reduced seed diversity globally. Yeah, and they, if, if they aren't doing it with their genetically modified seeds, they're doing it through the courts because they got deeper pockets and nastier lawyers. Now the merger will make Bayer Monsanto con conglomerate the largest seed and pesticide company in the world, giving it enormous power to control farm practices, putting private profits over the public interest. Now that's just kind of to give you a little bit of backstory 
But here's the shady history of Bayer and the petrochemical cartel. So to understand the magnitude of this threat, it's necessary to delve into some history. And this is not the first time Monsatan and Bayer have joined forces. In both world wars, they made explosives and poisonous gases using shared technologies that they sold to both sides. After World War II, they united as Mo Bay or Monsanto Bayer and supplied the ingredients for Agent Orange in Vietnam. In fact, corporate mergers and cartels have played a central role in Bayer's history. In 1904, it joined with German giants BASF and AGFA to form the first chemical cartel. And after World War I, Germany's entire chemical industry merged to become IG Farben. Now, by the beginning of World War II, IG Farben was the largest industrial cor corporation in Europe and the largest chemical company in the world and part of the most gigantic and powerful cult cartel in all history. Now, it was a cartel. It's a grouping of companies that's bound by agreements designed to restrict competition and keep prices high. The dark history of IG Farben Cartel was detailed in a 1974 book titled World Without Cancer by G. Edward Griffin, who also wrote the best-selling Creature from Jekyll Island on the shady history of the Federal Reserve. Griffin quoted from a book titled Treason's Peace by Howard M. Brewster, an American chemical engineer who had studied the close relationship between German Chemical Trust and certain American corporations. M. Brewster warned that Farben is no mere industrial enterprise conducted by Germans for the extraction of profits at home and abroad. Rather, it is and must be recognized as a cabalistic organization which, through foreign subsidiaries and secret tie-ups, operates a far-flung and highly efficient espionage machine, machine. Now, the ultimate purpose being world conquest and the world superstate directed by Farben. The IG Farben cartel rose out of the international oil industry. Coal tar, or crude oil, is the source material for most commercial chemical products, including those in drugs and explosives. IG Farben established a cartel agreements with hundreds of American companies, and they had little choice but to capitulate after Rockefeller Empire, represented by Standard Oil of New Jersey, did so because they could not hope to compete with Rockefeller IG combination. Yeah, that's a one-two punch if I ever saw one. Now, the Rockefeller Group's greatest influence was exerted through international finance and investment banking, putting them in control of a wide spectrum of industry. Their influence was particularly heavy in pharmaceuticals. And the directors of American IG Chemical Company included Paul Warburg, brother of a director of the parent company in Germany and chief architect of the Federal Reserve System. Are you starting to see where all the dots connect? Follow the money. Now, the IG Farben cartel was technically, technically disbanded at the Nuremberg Trials following World War II. But in fact, it merely split into three new companies, Bayer, Hoechst, and BASF. Um, that Hoechst is H-O-E-S-C-H-T, so yeah, it's, it's Hoechst. <laughs> Yeah, and they remain pharmaceutical giants today. To conceal its checkered history, Bayer orchestrated a merger with Monsanto in 1954, giving rise to Mo Bay Corp. Or 1954, yeah. And in 1964, the U.S. Justice Department filed an antitrust lawsuit against Mo Bay and insisted that it be broken up, but the companies continued to work together unofficially. 
Now, in Seeds of Destruction, the Hidden Agenda of Genetic Manipulation from 2007, William Eg um, Engdahl states that global food control and depopulation became U.S. strategic policy under Rockefeller's protege, guess who? Creeper Henry Kissinger, who was Secretary of State in the 70s. Along with oil geopolitics, these policies were to be the new solution to the threats to U.S. global power and continued U.S. access to cheap raw materials from the developing world, a.k.a. national security. You control oil, you control nations, Kissinger notoriously declared, and you control food, you control the people. Global food control has nearly been achieved by reducing seed diversity and establishing proprietary control with GMO seeds distributed by only a few transnational corporations, led by Monsanto, and by a massive taxpayer-subsidized propaganda campaign in support of GMO seeds and neurotoxic pesticides a de facto cartel of giant chemical, drug, oil, banking, and insurance companies connected by interlocking directorates reaps the profits at both ends by waging a very lucrative pharmaceutical assault on the dis-ease created by their toxic agricultural chemicals. Now, I know there are some people that think that Russia is bad and evil. Some of the things that I'm seeing coming out of Russia from actual people in Russia, or, okay, I hope they're not actors. It doesn't feel actorish. Maybe it's just uh, my wishful thinking. But in the end, the Green Revolution engineered by Kissinger to control markets and ensure U.S. economic uh, dominance may be our nemesis. While the U.S. struggles to maintain its hegemony on, by economic coercion and military force, Russia is winning the battle for the health of the people and the environment. Russian President Vladimir Putin has banned GMOs and has set out to make Russia the world's leading supplier of organic food. Now this, from the uh, Ringing Cedar series that I am currently reading. I'm in book six right now. And in book six, Vladimir Migre, who is the author of the Ringing Cedar series, included the open letter that he sent to Vladimir Putin. Now, a lot of this stuff started in 1997. That's when the first books came out. And so this has been going on in Russia for a while. But Putin is backing at least somewhat the uh, going organic and setting up your own homesteads and all of that other fun stuff so say what you will he may be a puppet I don't know but I tell you what he sees where the money is because look at the market for organic food he sees where the money is he's no dummy now, the Russian families are showing what can be done with permaculture methods of, on simple garden plots. And in 2011, 40% of Russia's food was grown on dachas, which is cottage gardens or allotments, and predominantly organically. Dhaka gardens produce more than 80% of the country's fruit and berries and more than 66% of the vegetables, almost 80% of the potatoes, and nearly 50% of the nation's milk. Much of it consumed raw. And here we go. Russian author Vladimir Migre comments. See, and I didn't even read that far, and there's Vladimir. Essentially, what Russian gardeners do is demonstrate that gardeners can feed the world and you do not need any GMOs, industrial farms, or any other technological gimmicks to guarantee everybody's got enough food to eat. Bear in mind that Russia has only 110 days of growing season per year. So in the U.S., for example, 
gardener's output, output could be substantially greater. Today, however, the area taken up by lawns in the U.S. is two times greater than that of Russia's gardeners, and it produces nothing but a multi-billion dollar lawn care industry. How's that? How's that? In the U.S., only about 0.6% of the total agricultural area is devoted to organic farming. Most farmland is soaked in pesticides and herbicides. But the need for these toxic chemicals is a myth, and it's destroying the soil. Man, if you lived out here, I could show you. Or if you came out for a visit, I could show you fields where you can see how dead that soil is because of this kind of farming. In an October 17th article in The Guardian, columnist George Mon uh, Monbiot cited studies showing that reducing the use of um, neonit yeah, pesticides, those kind of pesticides, actually increases production because the pesticides harm or kill the pollinators on which crops depend. So rather than an international trade agreement that would enable giant transnational corporations to dictate to governments, he argues that we need a global treaty to regulate pesticides and require environmental impact assessments for farming. He writes that farmers and governments have been uh, comprehensively conned by the global pesticide industry. It's ensured its production should not be properly regulated or even in real world conditions properly assessed. The profits of these companies depend on ecocide. Do we allow them to hold the world to ransom or do we acknowledge that survival of the living world is more important than returns to their shareholders? So. I'm going to just go ahead and share this again over in the chat and let you finish reading it because I want to go see what happened, <clears throat> excuse me, this date in history. Vinny's back! Vinny's back! I got to go check out the pig. I'm also going to check, I, I was listening to something earlier and talking about Dresden. Um, Germany and what was going on there and why it was totally obliterated because it really had no strategic value no no military anything going on there but they obliterated that town and so I'm going to be doing research on that and I may be doing that in a future rocket chair you never know over here on the pig the word of the day is diplomacy <laughs> yeah right it's the art of saying nice doggy while reaching for a club that's pro okay that's that's what they call diplomacy nowadays yeah in the quotable quotes section government's great contribution to human wisdom is the discovery that the taxpayer has more than one pocket thank you H.L. Mencken they have robbed every one of my pockets yes they have and ev just about everyone else's too now, this date in history, the 31st of May, the last day of May, tomorrow will be June, and the June bugs will be out. I don't know why they call them June bugs, because usually they bother us in July, but whatever. In any case, the 31st of May, 1678, the world's most famous or infamous streaker, Lady Godiva, gives the locals a thrill by riding through Coventry naked. Later swears it was a tax protest. I think she was just showing off, riding bareback. <laughs> this date in history, the 31st of May, 1916. Somebody had a sick sense of humor when they named a Brit battlecruiser the Invincible. Ship proves merely mortal when it explodes and sinks. And finally, this date in history, the 31st of May, 1949. Having no life, Charlie... Uh, Lupica moves to a four-foot platform atop a 30 or atop a 60-foot pole and says he'll stay there till the Indians clench the pennant. 117 days later he comes down after they blow it. Dude, seriously. All that for a stupid team? It's a game. It's a game. 
Oh, well, come on over to PIGazette.com. Say hey to Hambo and Porkus. Tell them I sent you. See them squeal. <laughs> they are kind of fun. Hi, Hambo. Hi, Porkus. In any case, let's see what's going on later on. Later on this evening, we have got the Freakers Ball coming on um, Real Liberty Media Radio. And then tomorrow at noon is uh, the Dork Table with, whoa, 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 I clicked the wrong button, <laughs> with Flash a Rooney Dork. I won't be able to play. I thought about it, but I won't be able to play. I got to go into town and help my Uncle Tommy. So, sorry, Flash. Um, <clears throat> in any case, Sunday at noon Eastern Time, Grimner's going to be hopping on the radio to play some blues for you all. And I'm sure there will be a rousing game of trivia going on in the chat as well. Then, directly following Grimner at 3 p.m. Eastern Time is Hal Anthony, who's going to op open up a can of whoop ass on yo ass. Behind the woodshed. Don't don't double dog dare him. He'll do it. Honest, he will. Then Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, Grimner's going to be giving you some leftovers. I love leftovers. I love leftovers. I hopefully will be back in time. I have to go out of town on Monday. Um, then on, let's see, on Tuesday... I'm trying to remember because I don't have the schedule pulled up. Tuesday is Flash, Rooney, and Vinny with uh in a perfect world and then on wednesday <laughs> i will be back with the wackadoodle wednesday edition of the rocket chair so let's see do i have anything else that i can do just a few minutes let me see what the piggy guys have gotten their tasty tidbits hmm Oxford eases admission standards for poor students with average grades. Ah. Huh. Apparently, Oxford University, one of the most prestigious higher education institutions in the world, is rolling out a program that offers students a free year of school if they come from a disadvantaged background and don't meet the university's stringent grade standards. Now, it's called the Foundation Year, the UK-based university has stated that the A-level grade requirement for admission isn't going to be expected by students who come from disadvantaged backgrounds. Instead, not only do they get to attend Oxford that year for free, the goal is to diversify the student population, which according to The Independent, claims to have 25% of undergraduates come from UK's underrepresented backgrounds. Ah. Now, the Independent reported that the new program is a response to criticism that Oxford and Cambridge enrolls too few black students. A, 19, or a 2018 Independent article noted that Cambridge data showed some of its colleges admitted no black or no, yeah, no black British students over five years. And in 2018, pointed out that the Oxford only had a handful of black students were, that were admitted, which was less than 2%. So instead of keeping the standards and expecting people to be able to jump through those flaming hoops that you have all of you, uh, all of you other priggish people jump through them flaming hoops and get your ass on fire because, well, liar, liar, pants on fire. Um, you're going to change the standards. I see how that is. Is this an everyone gets a trophy kind of thing? I'm not being racist here. I'm just saying this sounds very everyone gets a trophy kind of thing. So, apparently, as for this new foundation program, the Independent reports that around 50 bright students who have experienced severe disadvantage or educational disruption and are not in a position to make a competitive application will be offered a foundation year. Students eligible for the program who will be able to get a place um, with lower A-level grades than other applicants may include refugees and children in care or with care responsibilities themselves. The participants will all be based at Oxford Colleges and provided they successfully complete the program will move on to undergraduate degree for which they were admitted. The Vice Chancellor of Oxford Lewis 
Richardson called the admission policy adjustment a sea change. Yeah, you're rocking the boat, I know. Um, oh, it's Louise. She's, um, she said that her colleagues have united behind the commitment to accelerate the pace at which we are diversifying our student body and ensuring that every academically exceptional student in the country knows that they have a fair chance of a place at Oxford. Yay. In addition to the free year of school for the disadvantaged students who do not meet the grade criteria, Oxford is also planning a program to help poor students who do meet the A grade admission requirements. That program, the Independent says, will help up to 200 students get additional support in transition or to transition successfully from school. And once the two programs are up and running, will represent 10% of Oxford's UK undergraduate intake. Well, pat yourselves on the back, Oxford. But apparently not everyone gets a trophy. 50 and 100. All righty. Oh, well. Y'all been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com, Channel 9. Channel 9? No, Channel 10. Where in the hell did that come from? freaking Friday. Thank you all for listening in for my fee buttles and my once in a while being coherent. And I will catch you on the flip side. I don't know when, but it'll be sometime in the funny papers. But until then, please remember, I truly do love you all. And I wish you all enough. Good night. <laughs>